From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show with AIDS. Not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. So I had a conversation with a woman who... uh, I never actually got around to dating. We never had sex. She was uh, in the process of leaving Los Angeles. And why was she leaving Los Angeles? (laughs) Well, she was from uh, somewhere in the northern part of the state. I will try not to identify her. And she moved to L.A. to be with a boyfriend. And when she came to Los Angeles, the boyfriend was the one and only reason why she came. She had no job. She had no school. She had no relatives. She had no support system. She had nothing except a boyfriend. So now imagine this scenario. We're talking about somebody who is 20 years old. Yes, I said 20. So she leaves Northern California where her parents are, siblings are, the friends she grew up with are there, what have you. She leaves to come be with her boyfriend in Los Angeles. So what happens when she gets here? She takes a lousy job at some kind of a construction company where she's like, you know, fresh meat for the guys working at the construction company. She's sitting there at the front desk like as a receptionist slash secretary slash fantasy of the owner, whatever. And meanwhile, uh, she is living now in the apartment of the boyfriend. And what happens? Well, predictably, once the boyfriend has cut her off from her parents, cut her off from her siblings, cut her off from her friends, moved her 500 miles away, now she's got a lousy job. Do we have a problem brewing outside? Maybe we got to step this down a little bit. <laughs> you know, if you're not going to buy soundproofing for the studio, the least you can do is tell everybody to shut up for the hours I'm on the air. <laughs> Please. Jesus. Anyway. So the boyfriend gets her to leave everybody she knows and everything she knows. She takes the job at the construction company. Lousy job. And once she is cut off from her entire support system, suddenly the boyfriend shows the side that she's never seen before. He's loud, threatening, abusive, and then we find out physically violent. To the point where she says, I've had it, I can't take it anymore, I'm leaving. This is about the time that I met this woman. 
And you can just imagine the self-esteem fiesta we could be having. Or the lack of self-esteem fiesta. You know, that's just the perfect time to be getting inside the head of a young 20-year-old girl. <laughs> that's the perfect time. No support system, no family, no friends, living far away from home. She broadly hinted, broad that she is, she broadly hinted that uh, she'd like to go from one disaster to another. She broadly hinted that she'd like to move into my place. Now, get this. We haven't had sex yet. Now, you know me. I said, N-O, no. <laughs> no to that. And when I said no to that, she licked her wounds, packed her things and prepared to leave to go back home to her friends and family back up north. But before she did, she attempted to drag me into something she called a long-distance relationship. Now, she's heard my radio show. You would think she would know what my opinion about that is. But, like every woman who thinks she has the magic vagina, she thought that she would be the one who could uh, get me to do what other women couldn't get me to do. I said, number one, to me, there is no such thing as a long-distance relationship. It's just long-distance cheating. <laughs> That's all there is. And it's not just me. You're going to get back up north, and what are you going to do? So you'll get your job at Target or Bob's Big Boy or wherever you'll be working. <laughs> you'll get your job at the beauty salon. And somewhere along the way, you'll meet a guy who says, hey, want to go to a movie? And you'll say, sure. You'll meet a guy who says, hey, let's go to a club. And you'll go. And one night you'll have too many drinks, and one thing will lead to another, but you'll be 500 miles away. What goes on the road stays on the road. You won't tell me what happened. You'll think I'm not the wiser. And that's what long-distance relationships are all about. Why in the world would I want to have a long-distance relationship with someone I haven't had sex with? I mean, this is delusional. Well, we're going to start having sex once you move back up north. We can fly up or down each weekend, get together, <laughs> have sex. Finally, now that we're committed to each other, I mean, this is insanity. So you understand what we're dealing with. This was a long time ago. And so, this woman, a long time later, calls me up. She calls me up, and she says, uh, so what's going on with you? Do you uh, have a girlfriend yet? Is what she says to me. <laughs> Do I have a girlfriend yet? Darling, listen carefully. I wasn't looking for a girlfriend before, and I'm not looking for one now. And she's like, well, come on. Don't you want to settle that? By the way, I don't want to pick on this particular individual, and not for any other reason except that, she represents many people, so I don't want to get hung up on her as much as I think this conversation represents the opinion of many women. So even though you're going to say that she's this or she's that, trust me when I tell you, she's not the only woman who ever said these things, I'm going to tell you. So she says, there's got to be a woman one day, you're going to have to settle down. And, then you, and, and I said to her, point blank. How much more settled down can I be? In April, I will own my Hollywood house for 11 years. And recently, I just bought a second home up north in Santa Barbara County. 20 acres. Both are homes I have no intention of selling or flipping. I now have my, my home and I have my vacation home. And I absolutely love them both. I have a steady job with good income. 
I am not going out at night and shooting heroin or smoking crack or running around like a nut. I live a relatively stable existence. Pay all my bills on time. I have a FICO score over 800. I mean, that's about as settled as a person gets. And it is amazing how some of the women who say one day you've got to settle down, look who they are. This woman, I guess by now about to turn 21 or 22 or whatever, this woman uh, still doesn't know what she wants to be when she grows up, still doesn't have a career goal, still doesn't know if she wants to live in Sacramento or Los Angeles. Now she says she's coming back to Los Angeles. But before she comes back, she's trying to gauge my interest level. Um, many of the women who say that one day you've got to settle down, they themselves have not settled down. They themselves have no idea what they're going to do, where their money's going to come from, where they're going to live, whether they're going to go to school, what they're going to study. How can somebody like that tell me that it's time for me to settle down or one day I'm going to have to settle down? I am settled down. Anyone who's ever been to my home and seen how sophisticated it is and how orderly it is and how pleasant it is would know. They would know. They would know that I am settled down. I am happy. I don't need a wife. I don't need a girlfriend. And I don't need to settle down because I am settled. I'm settled right now. And then we got to the conversation about kids. Again, haven't I made my position on children crystal clear? Children, love them. Love them more when they go home with you. <laughs> right? No interest in having my own. Oh, my goodness. She said things to me like, well, don't you want to have like a little piece of you, like a little piece of you here on earth? I said, hey, wait a minute. My DNA is well represented. I have a brother. I have a nephew. I have two sisters. They have multiple children. A little piece of me is all over the place. My DNA is all over. Just because I didn't spread it or I didn't raise it doesn't mean it isn't part of me. And uh, I don't have that kind of ego that my DNA is so special. That a little piece of me has to remain on Earth somewhere. I mean, what, what is that? The conversation continued into all kinds of other areas. But again, it was typical of young women and the kind of conversation they'll they'll drag a guy like me into. She talked to me about wanting to get married, and I said, well, guess what? I have no need to get married and have children. I just don't. She said to me that, oh, well, that ultimately that's her goal to get married somewhere down the line and have a kid, but she also wants to have a career. And I'm like, well, you know, you're in your early 20s. <laughs> what what kind of education do you have? Well, I'm going to go back to school. Yeah, when are you going back? Um, Maybe this fall. So you're going back to school in L.A.? Well, no, maybe I go to Chico State, or maybe I go to like something else up north. I like, thought you were coming back to Los Angeles. Well, I said, look who's not settled down. You. <laughs> Why are you in a position to tell anybody they should be settling down? Have you lived in the same residence for 11 years? Have you been making a seven-figure income for as many years as I have? Have you saved any money, invested any money? Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? Who are you to be telling me I need to settle down? Honestly speaking, what does that mean? Do we need to settle down? Do I need to settle down any more than I've already settled down? I know what women are saying when they're saying settle down. They're saying stop having sex with other people, sire my children, and then pay the costs of raising those children so I can quit my job and stay home and go to Starbucks and 
get my nails done, and raise children during the day. That's what they mean by settling down. I'm already settled down. What they're saying is transfer some of my wealth to them so they can stop having to scratch for every dime and so they can live out their lifelong dream of living in a big house and raising children and having someone else pay for it. Oh, which she heard about my house up uh, up north, up in Santa Barbara County. Oh, my God. You've got that big house and no one to share it with, she said to me. Oh, yes, I have. All my friends are coming there, my my family members, my brother, my sister-in-law, my nephew, my cousin, his wife. Everybody I know will come there and will share all the fun times with me, will have a good time with me. Everybody I know. I will have uh, get-togethers on Memorial Day and Fourth of July and Labor Day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> you don't have anyone to share it. Yes, I do. Anybody I want. And when I don't want to share it, I will keep it to myself. I will stay there by myself when that's what I want. I just can't believe some of this stuff. And I can't believe who throws the criticism. Women who've accomplished nothing, done nothing, contributed nothing, talking to guys like me and telling us we need to settle down. Do we need to settle down? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. My ex-girlfriend, she says the biggest mistake I ever made was introducing you to Tom Likas, but it was the biggest gift that she ever gave me. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. All right, I told you about a conversation I had with a woman that I briefly flirted with, never had sex with, and the content was just remarkable, but she's not the only one. There's a lot of women who say things like what she said to me. Tara, hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Well, it is very nice to be talking to you. I'm a longtime listener. I'm 25 years old. I've been listening to you for about six years now. And I just wanted to call in and say that you are absolutely right. You do not need to settle down. And basically by this girl saying, quote, unquote, you need to settle down is basically saying you need to settle for less. And it's just not right. Or settle for her. Yeah, exactly. And you need to be doing that. You're living the life that you pictured yourself living when you were a young boy. And you don't need to throw that all away. That's dumb. And, <laughs> I, you know, I was led astray at various times during my life. And you, I'm sorry, you what? I was led astray by girlfriends, wives. Oh, I, I was led astray. I know. Cheated but I, on. I've I cheated on. I found my way back on the path. Exactly. So when women say to men, you need to settle down, is basically saying you need to settle for less. And if they're not settled down themselves, the women, then they just want somebody to settle down so that they can settle down because they can't find their own way to do it because they don't know what they want in life. I think you're right. All right. And, well, but but isn't, don't you find it amazing that women who have accomplished nothing, They've done nothing. They haven't gone to school. They haven't got a degree. They haven't got a career. They haven't got money. They haven't got any savings. They don't own an apartment or any real estate. They bring nothing to the table, nothing to the party. Exactly. Would come to somebody like me who is wealthy and accomplished and successful and focused and tell me that I need to settle down? No, that's that's not cool. <laughs> It's not cool. And a lot of women will do that. They'll they'll say that to men, settle down, so that they themselves, the women, can have somebody to settle down with and be secure with. Yeah, see, they want to settle down. Exactly. But they can't find a way how. By moving in with somebody way. who is uh, reliable and dependable and financially secure. Exactly. Or else if, if they had all those things themselves, then they would settle down on their own. They wouldn't need somebody to do it with. I agree with you. All right, Tom. Well, can you take me out African tribal style, please? I certainly can. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Kotale nenge asika mama. Oya kotale nenge asika mama. It's 
one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Here comes Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing great. Mi tocayo. I don't know if you know what that means, Tom. I, actually, I do. <laughs> right on. Hey, Tom, you just want to tell you, I'm gonna, well, first of all, I'm a long-time listener, second-time caller. But what I do want to tell you, Tom, is that just like I agree with the last caller about people that tell you they want you to settle down, it's really settling for less. But you know what? What I really appreciate about you, Tom, is that I can listen to you day in and day out, and I agree with you 99.9% of the time. <laughs> And But what I really, really wanted to tell you, Tom, is that I appreciate what you do because a lot of people growing up, a lot of kids, that's what we're told by our parents. Oh, you grow up, you settle down, you get a career, blah, 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 blah. And there's no one to really tell you, hey, look, man, to be, when you're settled down is when you have your stuff together. You know, you have your finances together, you know, cash, career, crib, so forth and so on. And there's no one really out there. There's not enough influences, positive influences such as yourself that does it. So I just wanted to thank you, Tom, from the bottom of my heart and a bunch of other people whose sentiments I'm probably expressing through my voice right now. Thank you, Tom, for what you do. You're awesome, man. I love you. I love you so much. I, I'm, I'm so glad you're on the radio. I'm so glad that you that you have a voice that that you know that goes out to people because you know what we need more Tom Likuses in this world, man. That's all I can say. Well, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it, Tom. Wow, that is amazing. You know, you don't need a woman to settle down. And in fact, I've told you about women who are dream killers. I mean, you not only do you not need a woman to help you settle down, in many cases, a woman will destroy or curtail or limit your career aspirations. Because women naturally know that if you do better at your career, you might kick them to the curb and go for a, you know, a hotter, younger model. So, quote unquote, settling down with a woman does not necessarily make your life any better. In many cases, it makes your life, it makes your career, it makes your income level worse. Not to mention the amount of money that uh, many women like to spend, which of course comes from us. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Susan, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey Tom, how are you? I'm great. I just wanted to call and tell you that I agree with everything that you're saying. Although I'm married, I just had a beautiful little baby. I'm extremely happy with my life, but every once in a while I get that feeling of, man, I wish I had the freedom. I wish I had just, uh, you know, the, the, the free time to do what you do and just enjoy and not have to answer to anyone. Again, I repeat, I'm so happy with my husband, my baby, and my, my entire life. I'm accomplished. I'm very successful, make a six-figure salary. but there's a part of me that wishes that sometimes I just had that freedom. And now you've got 15 years minimum of yeah, your I, life being complete chaos. And it already is because I'm experiencing panic attacks. I'm, you know, stressed out because I'm concerned about the baby. And every once in a while, I just, man, I, I just wish I didn't have all that to worry about. Will I change it? Uh, no. I, I, I love everything about my life. But uh, it just amazes me sometimes how I listen to you, and I'm like, man, it's like me talking. I, 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 really, I really agree with you. I don't agree with you in a lot of things, but this time around, you know, first time I called and I got through, and um, I agree. You, you, you're, you're doing the right thing. I mean, I'm, 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 uh, I'm jealous. I meet a lot of people who would like to be me, especially women. Do you really? I do. Sometimes I feel like, you know, more women wish that they had that free, happy-go-lucky lifestyle um, than to get settled. I think it's just the pressure from society, from culture. Um, I, I think that a lot of us, we just are so afraid of what people are going to think or that we're going to die as old maids. And that's not true. Not, not in this time. Not in this life anymore, at least. Uh, it was probably before. But we've got so many things, so many options uh, By the way, if you've got that... your own money, uh, what, what does it matter if you're a so-called old maid? What, what does it matter? You know, uh, for me, I am unmarried. I love what I have. I love my free time. And uh, if I died without having a partner, what would be the problem with that? 
Well, probably nothing. Probably nothing because I I can't see my my life without my husband right now or without my little girl. Although um, I can I can see where you, where you're coming from. Although it's not that big of a deal in the big scope of things. We all go to the same place. You know, it's about how much you enjoy your life and what you make of your life when you're here. So, no, you know, I don't think you're, I mean, you're right. It's not going to make such a big difference. I think it, once you have it, then you realize how much you'll miss it. You know, I think had I never been married or had a child, I would have known how wonderful it was. But because I was single for so many years, um, you know, I just got married three years ago, um, it's so fresh in my head that I, that I sometimes just drive home just daydreaming about, you know, I'm going home. Uh, through the Hollywood Hills, I'm going, you know, I used to party down here, and now I've got to go home and cook and clean and, you know, change diapers. Now you have to drive through the Hollywood Hills to get to housework. That's right. So I leave work to go to work. Um, it's wonderful work, and when she says, Mom, it's the most wonderful thing in the world. But sometimes I, you know, I miss getting dressed up and, you know, going to the clubs and just meeting friends for drinks uh, that's i think that's a big part of the anxiety i go through sometimes because i'm having withdrawals like wow I, I can't meet a girlfriend for a cocktail hour right so it, it's it is a huge huge transition and i always tell women this be be careful what you wish for because once you have it it's very you know chances are yeah you're unlocked in for at least 15 yeah once years. you have it you're stuck with it and you know what i mean about that Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been gone from it for about two years now, and it is just clear thing. It is worth it. Now I go out all the time with different girls. It's a blast. Now, I don't know what I was thinking, imprisoning myself. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Okay. We continue with your telephone calls, Laura, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great. I just wanted to tell you a couple of things, and I finally got through. Sometimes it's impossible to get through to you, but um, I wanted to tell you that you know what the late the other lady was saying that it's it's true. I mean, you have kids, you you are married, and you know things are not the same as they used to be. But it doesn't necessarily mean you know they're bad. This is what you want your life to be. Like I cannot imagine myself, you know, not being married, not having my children. But it doesn't mean that I don't have fun. Uh, you know, you can settle down, but you can still uh, go out for a drink with your friends. You can still do things that you do when you're younger. I mean, maybe not as often, but you can still do those things. You know, I... Uh, yeah, but, I but, but it's rare. I mean, it's not just not as often. It's rare. It's not rare. It's not yeah. rare. I mean, yes, a it lot is. of my friends, of course, they come home and they do their... They work. They do their, um, you know, wifely things but they you know it, my, i can leave my kids with my husband anytime and do whatever i want to do go to a spa uh go out to dinner with a friend go to a movie do whatever i want to do i mean it, you know you're you're married you're not dead you know you it doesn't mean that you have to be well if uh, i'm married to somebody i say what's the point of me marrying you if then you're going to be going out and doing these things by yourself all the time why well, do I'm i need doing it all the time well you, ju you just said you do it as regularly as you ever did uh, no, not there is regularly, but you know, sometimes you do need to get away from the house and you do those things with your friends. You need to enjoy yourself with your friends, but you need to, I enjoy coming home and, you know, spending well, time. Well, clearly you life. never, you never traveled anywhere of, of note, anywhere of interest. Oh yeah, we've traveled. Where have you gone? We've been on a cruise to Europe, uh, we've been to, um, Hawaii, we've been er a lot of places. A lot of places, but oh, I do enjoy... See, I'm talking is, about out of the country. Hawaii is the United States. Well, I mean, uh, you know, Europe. Uh, we've been to Europe, Vienna. Well, I mean, you were on a cruise uh, You, you were on a cruise ship. You were not staying in any of those places. We did. We stayed in Vienna for a few days. A few days in Vienna? Mm-hmm. Well, when we were traveling, yeah. What was it, well, what is that? Oh, back, back when you were traveling? Mm-hmm. Which you don't do anymore. Yeah, we do. We just right now. Yeah, where do you go? Disney World, Legoland. No, not that's not true. Where? We go different places, but right now. It's where do you go? Not, where not. do you go? Right now? Yeah. Well, we haven't been anywhere in that's right. Years. That's right. And you're not going to be for some time. 
No, why? We want to take a trip this year. We're going somewhere this year, actually. Well, you want to, but you haven't done it. Well, we're going to. We're planning on it for November. And where are you going? Uh, we're probably going to go to Mexico. You know, like uh, Cabo San Lucas, Mazatlan, places like that. Mm. Right right now. I mean, right now. This is just what we can afford. It has nothing to do with our kids. And uh, well, why, why do you think that's all you can afford? It's because you have kids. No, no. Yes, yes. Uh, my, I, can work. I can afford a lot more. I can I can afford a lot more than people I know who make similar money to me because they have kids and I don't. No orthodonture here, no private schools, that no $80 Nike sneakers, uh, no hooked on phonics, no Montessori, no books, no food, no nursery, no crib, no baby furniture. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. All those things take a whole lot of money. And but that's why you can't that, afford to do things. Uh, it's Well, but you also probably make a lot more than, you know. I'm, I'm, comparing myself, I'm comparing myself to other people who make the kind of money I make or have even more than I have. Well, then they're able to afford those things that you, you afford. even No, them. not when they've got children. Well, I, I have a lot of friends who, you know, have children and make a lot of money and they can afford those things. You know, they, we just can't afford it, but it doesn't mean others can't. Well, you would have had a lot uh, more uh, interesting life in many ways had you not had kids. Right. No, I mean, but you were talking about settling down that you don't, I mean, you you know. I am you, settled down. You personally don't want to do it. No, no, I, that's not what I said. You know, I, I Stop it. It's not what I said. At least quote me accurately. I believe I am settled down. Right. No, I mean with, uh, you know, with uh, one one person and, and having children and all that stuff. I mean, I mean, not settled. Of course you're settled. You know, your life is what you what you make of it. You know, you have friends, you have family, uh, and you're I'm very set, happy I'm with I'm settled that. down. Right, right. But uh, to me, you know, settling with my, you know, husband and kids is what I my idea of settling is. You know, so I, I you know, listen. So what do you no think about what do you think about it uh, when women who have not done anything with their lives? I'm talking women in their twenties. Mm -hmm. Have yes. accomplished nothing. <laughs> they have. They may have no degree. They may have no money. They have no apartment. They bring nothing to the party, except yeah, right. a uterus. Right. Yeah. And, I, I, and they I come listen. to somebody like me who has got money and has got two homes. And is reliable and dependable financially and everything. And they come to me and tell me I need to settle down. What they're really saying is they need to settle down and they need my wealth to do it. Right. That, you know, one of the few days today is when I, I totally agree with you. I don't, you know, I think the marriage rate is, I mean, among young people is, is too high. I don't think they should get married. I don't think they should have kids too young, you know, because a lot of those Things don't end very well. You know, they're divorced. They have tons of kids, and our country is paying for it, you know. I, I agree with you on that one. But I think when you are ready, when you feel like you're ready. And if you you're are, ever ready, and some people just shouldn't do it, like me. Yeah, but but why? You have everything to give a person. And but I don't. I don't. But I don't choose to give anything. I want to keep it for myself. Right, but you know, but who, what's going to happen at the end? Like, what's go, what are you going to do with all your money? Guess what? Uh, there are people uh, I know who've been good to me in my lifetime. Some of them are family members. Some of them are friends. Okay. Uh, there are charities uh, who right. will benefit. Uh, why do I have to give it to uh, some uh, blood relative who might be a slug or a slacker? Uh, why not give it to people who do meant something to me? Uh, well, let me ask you this. Do you like yourself? Yes, you, you do. very much. And you, and you you consider yourself a, a nice person, a good person? Yes. Okay, so why wouldn't you want to have, uh, you know, somebody that's just like you? Why would Too you much work. Too much sacrifice. But if you're saying that the woman does all the work, why do you think you're going to do all but the work? But they don't do all the work. Yes, they do. Not in this country, they don't. No, they don't. Technically, they do. I no, do. I mean, they I don't. I work right now. That's because I was I... with a woman. Let me give you an example. I was with a woman. Mm -hmm. well, she was not working. And I said, okay, how about this? I'll go to work and make the money. You take care of the house. She said, fine. Mm -hmm. Later on, she tells me, we need a maid in this place. <laughs> All right. So she wants to stay home and do nothing while a maid cleans the house. And she stands there directing them, like my favorite Martian, you know, pointing at things. Here, do this, do this, do this. Right. You're, no, you're right on that one. That's what's out there now. 
you know, I had a, I, I was home for a, a little while and I had a nanny too for my daughter. But when I couldn't afford her anymore and I'm doing everything, you know, I could totally relate and understand that I don't want anybody in my house except me. I want to do, you know, my own, I want to raise my own kids. I want to clean my own house. I want to cook my own meals. And, you know, we take those things for granted. Uh, when we have somebody, because now, you know, I can't really afford to do it, and I'm thinking, you know, uh, it would be nice to have somebody occasionally, but not like I used to. I just, we we used to take things for granted, you know? Hang, hang on a second, when Laura. We had the help. Dan, what did you want to say to Laura? Look, maybe I missed it. How long have you been married? Uh, 17 years. Okay, I'm I'm right there. I'm at 16. I got four kids. When they're under 10 years old, we went to Hawaii. We went to Mexico. We did all the all the fun little stuff. It don't happen anymore. The older kids get, the more expensive they get. That's a fact of life. Well, that's a fact of life. That's true. That is very true. I, I didn't say that's not true. I just said that you can still enjoy some of the things that you used to do before your marriage or, you know, while you're married, but when your kids are not, you know, or little. Uh, there, there's, there's, a, there's 10 years in there that you're not doing anything. When your kids are getting older, 17, 16, you can start doing the same things again, but you can't be doing it full board the whole life. If you're single and you, you, you're smart about what you do and you work on your career, then you could afford to do that with kids. People are just having kids and getting married way too early nowadays. Right. That's it. That's exactly what I just said to Tom. That's exactly what I just said. People are getting but, young. No, no. Yeah. What you said to Tom was, you told Tom that you could still do it even whether you got kids and that you're married and uh, you, you can't. Well, you can get babysitter, watch all your kids for a weekend. What kind of responsible parent does that? No, I don't have a babysitter. I don't have anybody right now. So when I travel, I have to take my kids with me. But before we did have uh, my parents around were more around more because my dad got sick. So they were always over and they were watching our kids when we needed to go away for the weekend or uh, just, you know, just go out or whatever. I mean, they were around a lot more than now. Yeah, but you, you, you can't be doing that. I, it, it's, it's, first of all, it's way too expensive to take your kids on a trip to Europe. It's very expensive, but you know what? A, a lot of people do, do it. But a it's not nearly as much fun. It's year. not nearly as much fun as going to wineries and getting a little buzz on and then going out at night to expensive restaurants and and, and, and enjoying it top flight first class, which you can't do oh, of course. with yeah. kids. You Listen, can't. First things you hey, can. Um, um, I make 140000 a year. I got four kids. I got a $3,000 mortgage. I don't go out and do all that stuff. I just bought into the life and moved on with it. So you don't go it, on vacation at all? Not anymore. Right? You know, oh. we take our weekends. We go snowboarding up in the mountains. We go to the lake with the boat. But we don't go. If we go on trips, it's me and her, and it's most likely Vegas, somewhere close. Well, yeah. I mean, we find things too. And cheap. Kids. I have three kids. And we, cheap. We go places like All Inclusive, where you know you just pay one fee for Ugh. You know, whatever. Ever eat the food fine. in an All Inclusive resort? Ugh. I love yeah. that. Ugh. Okay, you love the food at All Inclusive resorts? No, I don't always love the food, but the ones we've been to, the food has been pretty good. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I would have loved to spend my twenties backpacking through Europe, but you can't do it when you got kids. No, you can't do that. No, but you know what? I never wanted to do that. Tom, Personally. Dad, I wish I listened to you earlier. I Dan, never wanted to do that. I, I totally enjoy every single minute of my life being where I am right well, now. Well, maybe you do, but everybody doesn't want what you want. Our email address is my name, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.